And good evening, everyone. You're listening to another episode of the Deathmatch Russell Podcast. Tonight, my guest is KZW commentator James Rodney Ellis, and we're going to be talking to him and see what's going on with KZW and much, much more. Let's talk wrestling fans right now. Tune in. Hello, James. You there? Yes. Hey, how you doing tonight? Good, and you? Not bad, not bad. Just some crummy weather we've had here, you know, with this, I guess, all these storms and the tornadoes, but I'm not getting hit, you know, we're not getting hit. Well, that's good. Uh, it's just really started raining here the past couple of days. It's been sunny most of the time. Yeah, I was reading, I, I guess, the, the, uh, what is it, Dayton, Ohio. Dayton, Ohio really has that bad tornado. That's it. Yeah, they got hit pretty hard. And I saw it, like, blew a roof off of one of the, uh, one of the arenas down there. I'm like, oh, man. I was like, wow. The, uh, and Rockstar Pro actually canceled their shows, which was a good idea, you know? Yeah. Because uh, you don't, you don't want to... And plus, a lot of guys are... There's a couple of guys, I hope they make it this weekend, because they're heading to the shore for a big tournament, a death match tournament that I've been blasting away the past week and getting all hyped up about, you know? Yeah. But anyway, so what's going on with you? Uh... Nothing really, just uh, getting ready for the big uh, June 8th show here in Shopwell. Yeah, that's, that's a big, big show coming up. The next one. Big, and uh, it's looking pretty good. And a uh, new person making their way, I think, right? I can't, we can't, people don't know, but, right? It's supposed to be secret. Yeah, there's something in the works. There'll be a few surprises. Yeah. Mm hmm. And then. Also, the main event of that show is going to be Maddie B and cousin Big Frank Vanover in a lumberjack match for the title. Yeah, that's right. The lumberjack match. I totally forgot about that. Man, that's going to be a. Uh, I love lumberjack matches. You like remember as a kid growing up, you would watch WBF and you'd see that. Yeah, it's been forever since I've actually seen one. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't even think they do it anymore. Actually, you know what? Nowadays in independent wrestling, they have leather straps they bring to the ring. I've, I've seen that. that. Well, uh, you, you know, know fans, fans can <laughs> fans, fans can get, get their revenge on the superstars. <laughs> superstars. <laughs> huh. So, so JJ, JJ, listen to this. Yeah, you can bring some straps. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, it'd be make an interesting match. It really would be. I mean, it would. Uh, you know, it's just a strap and <laughs> just go to town. Give him somebody you that you really hate. Is, you know, good old licking. <laughs> good old whipping. Well, I think it was uh, last year. Yeah. It was actually uh, Frank and Sully Larkin in a uh, dog collar match like that. Yes. 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 Oh, oh, really? really? Okay. 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 So the the dog collar match, man. Those are, those, well, that's, that's another thing that's making its way around again, you know? You really don't really see it too much. much. Like, you, you know what I mean? Yeah. Anywhere you look in wrestling. It's like, come on, that's like, like old school. I mean, they bring the cage, you see cage. I am dope. I'm due for a cage match. I haven't seen a good cage match probably since see combat zone wrestling is cage of death, you know? Yeah. Well, usually every uh, September, KZW has uh, Cage Fury, and it's always a great show. Yeah, and that's I might be making my presence that week. I'm planning on it, planning my, planning my dream trip, getting myself both, you know, over there, get myself and doing some stuff with you guys, also, you know. That'd be amazing. There yeah, will be. I, first, I gotta sign that paper first. I gotta send in that little thing they call the license or whatever it is, you know, your state, yeah. com state commission license and just whatever. All that stuff. Professional, Professional stuff. stuff. You know? Yeah. All the... All um, the... Having yeah. to dot the T's and... Yeah. the T's. Yeah, it's all that stuff. So how long... So what made you get into commentating? Um, I've always been a fascinated with pro wrestling. And mm -hmm. So ever since then, I've always been just wanting to be in the wrestling business. Right. Right, like, like you would, uh, you know, know, who were your influences growing up? So many now. Uh, most, uh, JR for one big time. Yes. JR, Jerry the King, you know, uh, mm -hmm. even Jim Cornette when he was in the WWF. Mm -hmm. 
Right on. That's awesome. Dude, you know, and look where Jim Ross is now, right? Yeah, doing commentating for AEW. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What, do you th- what do you think of that? What do you think of that promotion? You, you like that? Is it catching your eye or are you like, wow? I watched uh, Double or Nothing, and I yeah. thought that was an amazing pay-per-view. Man, I'll, I'll tell you what, what I was impressed with it. Like, just I had to rent it because my friends were watching it, and, and and of course I have a lot of friends who are actually on the roster as well, you know. And I'm like, yeah, hey, you have to support them. You gotta watch this. It's like something that's gonna, and hopefully, you know, they'll come by Kentucky. They'll come by, you know, come by, you know, do shows in Jersey and everywhere else too, you know. Not just like these little, you know, pay per views once in a while, but I know they're gonna do tours and stuff, you know. Well, I know their uh, TV deal is supposed to start in like October. Yeah, yeah. And, and what, what do you think? Of, what do you think of John Moxley making a, uh, a return to the scene? I was not expecting that. No, that match. no, no, no. But if you remember that video, it really was like you know you saw the card slot, you know, pictures and the graphics were sort of catching your eye, you know. Yeah. And I'm like, wow, well, this is timing. Yeah, and now he's going to Japan already. He's, he's they're putting stuff up on the internet because you know he can take bookings, which is awesome. You know. Yeah, I'm glad that he didn't have to wait that like uh, bere- bereavement period that they usually have to wait. I know, I know. And Cody's just letting him do it, you know, and that's awesome. I'm glad. You know, I mean, Cody and you know, think about it. What a great team, like to to start a promotion. You know. Yes. Like, like we, I, I thought, thought that, you know, from the first time I heard about it, and I was like, my all, you know, the the, the all in pay per view that they started, and that really took a big, you know, turn for wrestling. And then, you know, now they look at them, they're gonna be this is like a success, you know? Yes. And I, I you know what? I, I wish I was there for the night. I remember I went to Chicago for, um, a free, freelance underground versus my game changer wrestling GCW was doing a show and on Sunday, I remember they were doing a press conference for the all, you know that that for that at the time, and I was like, damn, the first one? yes, yes, on a Sunday, right before I was leaving, twelve hours we were driving home, <laughs> I could have seen it, I could have seen Cody Rhodes, you know, but that would have been awesome. Well, I think that they announced their uh, next big show is going to be back in Chicago for All Out. Yes, yes. <laughs> and not a lot of people will be watching that one. That's uh, well, the first, you know, now that the smoke is clear, you know. Yeah. And the roster, what do you think of the roster? Pretty good? You think it's going to, you know, it's a really good roster. Oh, that roster's got a lot of talent on it. Mm-hmm. I mean, even the female talent as well. I mean, they're... <laughs> The females blow the, you know, blow out the of the two, uh, female matches they had was both blew my mind. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, the Jericho and, or, or, uh, no, excuse me. Yeah, that the mega match was pretty good. Also, you know, Cody versus Dustin, that really was a good match. I was like, wow. That's been one of my favorite matches. Yeah, or that became my favorite match of the past five years. Mm-hmm. It makes you know what it came clear, and I'm glad that they finally said, you know, let's <laughs> clear the smoke. Let's, I mean, not, you know, let's just clear and be be family again. You know? Yeah. And just cover that. I knew that was like eating at their hearts for years and years. You know? And, and, well, when you have two brothers, they always want to have a match together anyway. Yeah, you're right. You're right because. uh it's yeah it's just that you know they're they're calling you know it's in their blood it's in the blood of course the roads you know dusty of course you know the father yeah <clears throat> but uh so anyway who 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 are your favorite uh let's, 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 i like the best who did you grow up watching as a kid, kid? I mostly just, um, well, I watched uh, the, like, Ruthless Aggression era, era of WWE and then mm-hmm. flip back and forth between it and TNA. Yeah. 
I, I remember the first ever match I ever watched mm -hmm. live on TV was Chavo Guerrero and Rey Mysterio in an I Quit match on SmackDown. Oh, oh wow. wow. That's, That's awesome. awesome. I remember seeing actually Ch uh, Eddie Guerrero came to my hometown one year. I got I got to see him face Nova from ECW. It was pretty cool. Like, Eddie, Eddie was a great worker too. He really was. And actually, Ray came to. I saw Ray at a local. Uh, actually, was it TNA or no? It was a Jersey All. Uh, well, another show. I see a lot. Of, I see a lot of talent. It's like amazing after all these years, you know. Yeah. Well, the first uh, WWE show I ever went to mm. was in a small town called Pikeville, and the main event was CM Punk and Rey Mysterio. Oh wow! Oh man, Punk! You know, the only t I've seen Punk wrestle so many times in Ring of Honor, like when I was younger. I, I mean, not younger, younger, but I got to see, actually my favorite moment is actually two times. I got to see him actually in uh, actually leave. Before he signed his contract with the WWE versus Austin Aries, and then also like a like a great hometown show with him, you know, just brawling, just having a good old fight, you know. Yeah. In a juniors tournament, in a juniors tournament with uh, Brian Daniels, Brian, Brian, yeah, American Dragon, Brian Daniels at the time, you know. I bet that was a good match. Oh, to watch. oh yeah. Actually, well, bruh, I, don't, I can't even, I don't even know who, I'd have to look back and see, but it's, um, no, I don't, I don't have it in front of me, but it, yeah, I can't remember that, I have to look back into the tapes and stuff, I was a big DVD collector for Ring of Honor, you know, also, yeah, which really hooked me, you know. But, but now, now you, now I look like I'm like, it's all on digital now, <laughs> you know? I don't, yeah. I don't need to buy a DVD every single now. <laughs> you know, how, we, how our, our addiction can be with wrestling, you know? Makes it a lot easier. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's like, like t-shirt collections, right? <laughs> yeah. Being, being a fan of wrestling, we want every single shirt. <laughs> you know, you can't. Yeah, and I... <laughs> Yeah, you want like every shirt that comes out there, and it's like yeah. I don't have the money for it. I don't have the money, and it is is it gonna, is it gonna take up my closet space? Like I have like three, like like a huge rack downstairs, <laughs> full to the wall. Like you know, I'm thinking about yeah. just, I'm I'm starting to make. I think I should start a museum <laughs> or a store. You hear that? See now, mine has like WWE. Yeah. Uh, indie shirts and then collar and elbow now. So yes, my that's what all my uh, wardrobe is. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't, but you know what? I got. I think I might pick up one of those AEW hats. I might just have to support them and pick one of them up. Yeah. Well, I actually bought. Uh, I went to Comic Con this year in Lexington and mm -hmm. stopped at Hot Topic and bought uh, three of their shirts, AEW shirts. Oh, oh sweet, awesome. So maybe that will I'll have to pick up one. I'll have to go and get one. You know, definitely to add to a collection. Because <laughs> I, you know, like, like you probably see all my pictures and stuff. I have tons of collections that are crap. It's like, what the hell? I don't know what to do with it anymore, you know? Yeah, I totally understand that. I used to collect figures. I still collect figures. Like, just the, the, the small little Hasbro ones, you know, the little, the little ones. Yeah. I mean, those are great. Those are making a comeback, you know? Actually, they are making a comeback, because they, I think they said they're going to be making a series of those, you know? Yeah. I mean, I have some original. I just have some original, like, the, 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 I got, like, a Bruce Rhodey, uh, you know, like, the collector elite, or, you know, WF version, you know? Yeah. I think the oldest action figure I have would be a, um, a friend who makes it... But it's a uh, stone cold. Mm -hmm. I with, have, uh, like three of them in it. Yeah, I have um, what is it? The ECW. I have one of those Chris Candido ones, like the those those uh, you know, the small figures, you know. Yeah. Those those are really hard hard to come by. It's like the like those the the 
what's really hard to come by also is like the Japan wrestling figures that come out. Those are yeah. those are hard to come by. You have to like search high and low on internet or somebody knows somebody. You know. Yeah, I'm kind of like uh, the deepest, darkest part of the web to find them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, but like me, I got lucky and I found a, you know, the BJW Onita figure because I wanted to have him sign it, you know? Yeah. Uh, legend from Japan, you know? Yeah. Oh, speaking of that, Kenta's going to be making an appearance from Ring of Honor. I think I told you that. <laughs> I can't wait. Kenta from Ring of Honor is making a super appearance. Next week on Ring of Honor has uh, really gotten big. It has, but now the faces are starting to change, you know? As long, you know, with TNA too, you know. Yeah, TNA's getting better too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can't go down. They had that little. Oops. Had that little downslide, and yeah. Now they're starting to climb back out of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they uh, you know, they do a lot of stuff on Twitch TV too, you know. Yeah. Which is pretty cool. But, uh, which KZW would be doing stuff like that. <laughs> JJ, <laughs> right? You, know, well, you never know what might be in the works behind the scenes. Yes, indeed, indeed. Because we have people we we know who can do it. <laughs> you know, right? Yeah. There's a lot of guys on our team nowadays. You know, growing, it's growing. You, I'm sure you're, you're impressed that you have like guys like us helping to break the podcast scene, and you know, it's great to cover it. You know? Oh yeah, it's um, it's amazing mm-hmm. to have people like you all to help cover us, make our name out there, mm-hmm. have more people tune into it. Yeah, because it's uh, you, you know, know something, something we need. You know, you guys need it also. You know, you have to have wrestling. wrestling. You know, people. It's an, yeah. You know, and some of the wrestlers are scared to do it. I think too. You know, they're shy. They've never done a podcast or something. You know. You gotta break, yeah. you gotta break them out of the shell, you know. They have to learn. They have to learn to do that if they want to get their names out there too, you know. In the public, it's just like getting in the ring for Abs- the first time. Absolutely, I've never stepped in a ring. <laughs> no, I never have. No, I've never. I'm not a best professional wrestler. <laughs> I could be if I really wanted to, I'm not going to. I'd rather stay on the outside, be a fan, and have to pull the hell out of my friends. And, you know, the wrestlers. That's, you know, that's... Oh, I have friends that come to the show that yeah. give them down the road. Yeah. I'm sure that they, uh, you know, I'm sure they love it. Like, you guys just, you have fun with it. You have to just roll with every single thing that goes on. It's great. And the storylines are great, you know? Yes. But what's our next? next what's, what's the, the big, big one? one? Oh, yeah, the big lumberjack match, and you got, got a whole bunch of dates coming up too, as well. Yeah, we got. Uh, well, we just started our fair season uh, I know. past uh, Tuesday night. Yeah, that's, I saw that. There was a, you know, they had a big battle royale again there. It was pretty cool. To see. Yeah, with uh, Frank winning it. Yeah, yeah, again. again. Well, he's, look at that. He's, he's like, like, what, the second time he's won a battle royal now? Yeah, that's two he's won this year. <laughs> Boy, he should tie for three. Keep on going, right? <laughs> you could be the battle, yeah. be the battle royal <laughs> champion. <laughs> <laughs> right? We'll start something new. Why not? Well, I mean, hey, he's you know what? That new 24 7 title. So, why can't we have a battle royal title? Right. Absolutely. 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 It's kind of dumb that they got that, but they need something. I'm sorry, you know? Yeah, I don't like the design of it, really. No, no, no. I picked on it a couple times already. Last of my show, my friends were like, yeah, really? It's like, wait a minute. Just looks like a big gold dinner plate. <laughs> yeah, right? Covered up. <laughs> With letters. <laughs> like, I understand they're trying to make it the hardcore title mm-hmm. in a PG Air style, but... It just don't work. No. Who who has it now? I don't even know. I saw Ron Killings had it last. Or I don't even know. I don't even... Yeah, he still has it. He, he's now a two-time 24-hour champion. Yeah, he's been showing off a stupid vi- that video of him and the cowboy singing. Come on. <laughs> like, really? <laughs> and he keeps calling it the European title. Does he? Oh, man. Yeah. 
Oh, man. I, I should retweet him sometime just for the hell of it. I want to retweet him out and see what he says. I have to comment on that. Get under his skin and be like, what? <laughs> on SmackDown, I know uh, mm-hmm. Elias beat him. Mm-hmm. And then later in the night, um, I think it was a tag team match with R Truth and Roman Reigns versus. Oh, I and somebody I can't remember. Mm-hmm. And after the match, um, R-Truth pinned Elias for the title. Mm-hmm. Oh, wait, wasn't was Shane in the ring, too, or something? I saw a video. I was watching it. Or was that the singing? I think it might have been Shane was his tag team partner. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, I remember they, he was trying to cut a promo. promo and, yeah, he did the run in with the belt. He did the run in with, the, like, all the wrestlers were jumping in there, too, you know? I was like, oh, yeah. I was like, what's going on here? <laughs> yeah. He killed, killed, killed his, his song, song, but, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Not the, not the greatest singer of all time. <laughs> no. I mean, if you're going to have the honky talk man back in there, then you had somebody that would sing. <laughs> Speaking of the honky. At least you can play a guitar. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. I'm, uh... <laughs> Speaking of, like, like guitar players and people like, you know, honky talk, man, you know, I'm, I'm super excited to finally meet the Mouth of the South this Saturday night. I cannot wait to meet Jimmy Hart. That would be amazing to meet Jimmy Hart. I know, I've never met him, I've never met him in all my, you know, like, while growing up, WrestleMania 5, I've seen him there live, you know? Ooh, maybe I should take my, take my WrestleMania, my tickets, though. Hmm, have him sign that. Hmm. Yeah, I just might have to do that. But yeah, it's going to be great to see him. I met uh, Jim Cornette last year. Did you? I met him. And he's really cool. I met him at a wrestle reunion convention one year. I can't remember when it was, but it was fun. He's a great talker. He was telling me the 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 story about how... uh, you know, I asked him, I asked him, like, what was it like falling off that fucking, that scalp thing, you know, for the Starcade, you know, Star, uh, you know, the big Star, uh, what do you call it, the road, you know, that big thing that they had there, Star, uh, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, Star that WCW pay-per-view. Yeah, yeah, Starcade. And, uh, you know, he was telling me, yeah, you know, he, yeah, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't scripted. scripted. And then Dust, Dusty Rhodes was right next to me laughing his ass off. It was great. <laughs> like, just to see his face reaction, you know? Oh, man. Did he tear, like, something both in, in both of his legs when he fell off that? Yeah, yeah I, I think, think he did. He did. Because I was listening to his, uh, his podcast, mm-hmm. uh, The Jim Cornette Experience. Mm-hmm. And he was talking about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's uh, he's a, he's a, he's a work, you know. He's fun. He still does his, his podcast. This is my guy's podcasting now. It's amazing, you know. Yeah. I mean, I hardly can keep up with all of them. No, that's you know, like if I were to like pick some really, you know, Eric Bischoff has one, you know. Of course, uh, brother Bruce Pritchard, you know. That's a good one too. I like listening to him. Yeah, I listen to. Uh, something to wrestle. Mm-hmm. Uh, Stone Cold's, Steve Austin's Rattles Ramp, you know? That's a good one. Cole Cabana. Cole Cabana's another yeah, one. Yeah, Cole Cabana's is good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, what is it, the figure podcast with uh, Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins. Mm-hmm. That, that one too. That's a good one. Yeah. And it's uh, Sam Roberts, I think his name is. There's a guy named Sam Roberts that does one. He's, you know, from New York or something, but, you know, Siri Radio or something. I can't remember. Yeah, I think he does, uh, mm-hmm. he does, uh, the, like, pre-shows for the pay-per-views, don't he? Yes, yes he, he does. does. Yes. That's what I thought. Yeah. I know, I remember, oh, that's right. You know what, I remember seeing him at a rig of, uh, CZW show one time. <laughs> Running into me, you know, out of the parking lot. So I can find that video. I'll show you that. It's funny. Yeah. Actually, we're chanting, you know, Onita. Since Onita was there, we're all just saying, Onita! You know? Yeah. But, yeah, that's so, but, big, big things, things coming, coming next, this month, month, I guess. So, you know, 
wrestling is wrestling. It's just keep something growing. You know? Yes. But I want to say thank you for coming on. And this is really awesome. Let's do this again. Yeah, that's real fun, man. And you have a good night. You too. And you gotta get up early for work in the morning. Do you? I got. I'm yeah. off. Yeah, I, I'm off tomorrow, so I'm gonna head down to the casino a little early. You know, in the afternoon. I work. I work for FedEx. Yeah, I'm a garbage man. So uh, my buddy actually, hey, actually my coworker is a he works for FedEx too. So you know, big shout out to you guys. <laughs> Yeah, package handlers have to go in early to yeah. load the trucks for them. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't have to pick up my garbage in the morning, so I'm glad. <laughs> yeah, I bet you're glad of that. Yeah, but uh, you have a great night, and uh, we'll touch base in a couple weeks or so after. I'd like to hear what you know how the event went as well. All right, sounds good. All right, you have a good night, James. Be good. You too, man. Thank you for being on. Bye bye. I want to say that was real nice to hear from a KZW commentator, James Rodney Ellis, and uh, you know he does he sits behind the microphone at all KZW shows, play by play, tells you how it is. Fans, you gotta get out to a KZW show if you're in Kentucky because uh, you know there's big things in the works that are happening with them. They're doing good things and. Uh, you know, let me say that they are just a uh, just doing big things right now. And as he said, it's fair season, so there's a lot of fairs going on. But match that everybody's looking forward to is the next big event is on Saturday, June eighth. Maddie B versus cousin Frank Lumberjack match for the heavyweight t- the KZW heavyweight title. Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. That's going to be Saturday night. Fans, check that event out and much, much more. It's all posted on the Facebook. Go to the Facebook Kentucky Zone Wrestling and. That's it. Have, Have a, a good, good night, everyone. As, As you all know, know I, Death Match Wrestle Podcast will be away for the weekend. weekend. That's, That's right, because Game Change GCW, Game Changer Wrestling Combat, takes it to Atlantic City, to the casino for two nights. Man, it's, it's going to be a super exciting, it's, it's going to be a super weekend of blood, blood, blood. On Friday night, we're going to be having an induction ceremony for the Deathmatch Hall of Fame. We're going to be inducting Danny Havoc. We're going to be inducting Wife Beater. We are going to be inducting the Madman, Adman Pondo. And so much more, fans. And don't forget, Saturday night is TOS, Tournament of Survival. Who's going to survive? Who's going to die? Let's bleed. Let's get ultraviolet. GCW, it's going down. And to top it off, at the night, two matches after an after party. So, yeah, it's going to be really crazy, fans. If you're in Atlantic City, New Jersey, come on down to the Showboat Casino and uh, see what it's all about. Game Change Wrestling brings you the best of deathmatch wrestling in the world today. And much, much, much more. Good night, everyone. Hey, hey, wrestling fans. I want to mention Collar and Elbow. Collar and Elbow was founded on traditional values of professional wrestling. Two entities working together to create a product intended to connect with people on a, an emotional level. A symbolic relationship where one cannot flourish without the other. We strive to create a product that embodies our passion for professional wrestling expressed through street fashion. Visit CollarAndElbowBrand.com and use the promo code DeathMatchRussellPodcast and save 10% off when you make a purchase. Collar and Elbow, where wrestling passion meets street fashion.
You, you can find more Deathmatch Russell podcasts on the following social media. DeathmatchRussell.com. Follow on Twitter at DavidNJ32. And on Facebook, Facebook.com slash DJDaveNJ32. Find me on Podcast City Network at PodcastCity.net. Facebook.com slash Podcast City Network. Hit the like button and share. And on Twitter at Podcast City Net. You can hear Deathmatch Russell Podcast on Stitcher Radio and on iTunes.